Hi guys, welcome to Second Sector. My name is Sam and today we're going to be talking about my favourite liveries from the Formula 1 2017 season. Now all the cars have been released, we know the driver lineups and we've gone through Barcelona testing. I thought I'd make a little video to tell you guys what I think of the 2017 liveries, who is the best and who is the worst. Let's get started, shall we? Okay guys, so at the bottom of my list, Force India, it's by far the worst livery of the 2017 season. They've gone for this washed out grey silver across most of the car. Their huge shark fin, which has got no shape to it at all, it's just like a big square block on the back of their car. It's just all one colour, it's all blocky, it's bitty. It looks down, it looks damp, it looks sad. It's got no character. When I think about Force India, I think about oranges and greens and this lovely black gloss. This year, that's all suppressed to the bottom and they've gone for this grey and boring. And also, that nose. Really? I mean, last year the nose was a bit weird, but I liked it, it had character. When it came behind cars, it was like, mm, I'm coming for you, with these two big nostrils. But this year, you seem to have like cut the septum out of that nose. And you've kept these nostrils there, but then you've got this big tusk coming out of the front of the nose and it's horrible, it doesn't look nice and I know F1's not about looking nice cars, it's all about the fastest cars and who can win races but this isn't my fastest race list, this is my best livery list and Force India, you're at the bottom unfortunately but this might change, rumours are in Autosport and other publications that Force India might be teaming up with BWT, who are an Austrian water technology company. Now, BWT might ring a bell, because we have seen them in Formula 4, and we've seen them sponsor in DTM, and they like their cars to be one colour. Pink! So, if Force India do get a sponsorship from BWT, it will be great to see their car turn from this boring, damp grey to this lovely, bright pink colour, and I think it will really liven the grid up. But for now, guys, you're at the bottom of my list, Force India. Okay, so up next we have Williams. Now, I felt quite bad putting Williams this far down the list, but their livery hasn't really changed that much, so there's not... I couldn't really put them towards the top. They have a lovely classic livery with that martini wash through, and it's been in motorsport, it's got deep roots in motorsport martini, so it's, it's classic and I like it, but the car didn't look too complicated out there as well compared to some of the other cars, especially the Mercedes, you compare the same engine, the same power unit, but the, back, the rear of the car, especially on the Williams, just looks a lot more basic, and I'm, I'm worried that's gonna make them struggle this year, but this is not my aero, or this is not my power unit list, this is my livery list, and these guys haven't changed it too drastically, so I couldn't push them up the list. One thing that has changed drastically is their driver lineup. Now, we know Felipe Massa had an emotional retirement last year, and then he came back straight away. But that's good, because I like Massa, and uh, he's been topping some of the timesheets in testing as well, which has been good to see. One person who's been topping the headlines for Williams is his teammate, Lance Stroll. Young, billionaire's son, had a few crashes in testing, broke a front wing that put him out for a day. He even broke a chassis in one of them, so he's really channeling his inner Pastor Maldonado at the moment. So you might see some big crashes from him later in the season. But, yeah, not much really to say about Williams, so they're down there at the bottom along with the horrible Force India. Okay, this is going to be quite controversial, but next up, Mercedes. Again, not much has changed this year. They've, they've, they're the silver arrows. Their livery is always going to be silver, so they couldn't go up my list any higher, really. They've added some nice, you know, stripes, some neon stripes on the sides of it, which I really like. But again, it's much similar to the last couple of years that Mercedes have run. So again, they couldn't be pushed up my list. They stayed down there for the same reasons Williams is that it hasn't changed much since last year. Um, again, they, I think they've got one of the best looking noses on the grid. They've not gone for the fun, they've not gone for the weird Force India tusk, they've gone for the really nice rounded nose, which keeps it nice and smart. Um, one thing I did notice about the Mercedes is it's got an extremely long wheelbase. It's quite a long car um, compared to other cars on the grid for 2017. So I'm not sure if that's going to make them struggle, maybe, in around Monaco, or maybe it'll give them more of an advantage on some of the faster tracks. But We'll have to wait and see. But in terms of livery, not much has changed, not much I can say. It's the Silver Arrows. And don't shout at me please, because this is my livery list, so I know Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton, hashtag blessed, all that stuff. But they're down there because it hasn't changed much, not because it's a horrible livery. 
Ferrari! Now, I know what you're thinking, how can you put Ferrari so down this list? It's Ferrari, it's a race car, it's race car red, it's Ferrari, how dare you? But it's not their livery which has made me put them down this far, it's their use of sponsors on the car, which isn't, it's part of the livery, it's incorporated into the car's look. It just seems messy, it seems like they've just sort of laid back and gone, one there, one there, one there, one there, and it's just distracting on the eyes. You're losing that classic Ferrari red because you've got a Ray-Ban sign here, hop and sign there, this there, that there, this there, one there. I mean, the white highlights are nice. I like the white highlights on the side wings and the winglets at the back of there as well. I really like that. One thing I love about the Ferrari this year is the Italian flag going the whole length of the shark fin. I think that's lovely. It's a throwback to their Italian roots. It really brings out the Ferrari in it, you know? It's all Italian and all that. But again, the sponsorships just seem too messy for me. So I've put Ferrari this far down the list for that reason and that reason only. Um, it was the first car of the 2017 season where I personally saw the T-Wing being used on the back of that shark fin. I don't like them. I think it looks strange. I want to go and hang my coat on it or something. It just, I hope Ross Braun addresses this before we start in Melbourne and, and gets rid of these T-Wings because I'm not too keen on them. Um, Ferrari have done great in the tests in Barcelona. They've been top of the time sheets up there every single day. But I'm not sure if this is because of pressure from Italian press. If they didn't do well, they'd get torn apart. Italians love Ferraris, so they have to perform, they have to do well. And I don't know if other teams are just sandbagging and Ferrari are trying really hard in these tests. But as far as livery goes, it's red, it's a race car, it's beautiful, but the sponsors guys, for me, have ruined it personally. So, Ferrari are down there. Okay, as the list goes on, the cars get better looking. In my opinion, remember, before you start putting yours down there and disliking me in the comments, this is my opinion and this is my livery list and I think the car that deserves to be next is... Haas! Formula One! I'm really sorry for that accent. It, it's, it's Haas F1. They have released quite a different looking car this year and quite an aggressive looking car. Uh, my first thoughts were fighter jet, aggression, nice nasty side pods, the lovely go faster stripey kind of stuff on the shark fin. But after a short time thinking, I, I, I started to think, this reminds me of the Audi WEC LMP1 cars, which I loved, I absolutely loved those cars. Rest in peace Audi, by the way, for your endurance championship. But again, a great looking aggressive car. I think it has to done really well. I would like to see how they do this year on the grid as well because they've got Kevin Magnussen, who's one of my favourite drivers in Formula 1, so it'll be good to see what he can do after his rough departure, I believe, from Renault. But yeah, Hash has done really well. Great livery. I like it. Okay, so this one was quite an easy one for me to put up here. Um, I loved it last year when they first brought out the matte effect, but it's Red Bull. Um, their livery's lovely. You can't argue with it. It's that matte look. No one else is doing it in Formula 1. In fact, I don't think anyone else is doing it in motorsport. The, the matte sort of livery. If they are, let me know, put it in the comments below. But uh, Red Bull, they're up there, looks beautiful. Uh, a few things I have noticed though is that the shark fin is missing the bull's tail. And I'm not sure if this is because they've got some more aero upgrades to put onto the car and they don't want to show the hand in the testing. Um, I actually had dinner with Mr. Newey earlier in the year and we spoke about certain aero packages on this 2017 car. And I've not seen a single bit on there, which he was talking to me about. So uh, I, I do believe they're sandbagging, they're holding back, they've got a lot more to do. They have got this strange pingu nose that everyone's been talking about. And uh, it sort of takes air in above the wing and then disperses it underneath the, the nose. As far as I'm aware, I've got no idea what it really does. But um, yeah, I think Red Bull have got a great livery this year. Um, they've got a very short wheelbase, I've noticed. But I'm, I'm not sure if that is maybe to hand back the win to Ricardo in Monaco that he was robbed of last year because it'd be great going around that title track. But yeah, Red Bull, I like it, you're up there. Okay, so this is probably the most controversial release of 2017. They had huge hype leading up to it. They were dropping subtle hints about the colour, etc. throughout on their online social platforms. Um, they got rid of one of their biggest bosses, and of course it is McLaren. Um, they've got orange again, a throwback to the blue McLaren days, which I like, I really like it. 
Uh, a lot of you were upset because it wasn't white and orange, it's, it's black and orange, but come on guys, it's got to be baby steps. You can't just suddenly change the whole livery and go white and orange again, back to the Marlboro days. Um, it's not the only change they've gone through, changing the colour of their cars. Uh, Ron Dennis is now gone, obviously. And with the departure of Ron, goes the departure of the, the naming convention, MP4, which was the Marlboro Project 4 McLaren series. Um, it's now gone back to the L, well not back to, it's now gone to MCL, which is McLaren, which you see a lot on their number plates, on their road cars, etc. So, a change in name, uh, a change in livery, maybe a change in fortune? I'm not too sure, because in testing they went through five engines in four days. Honda really need to pull their finger out and sort out these reliability issues because personally one of my favourite teams, McLaren, I hate seeing them. As, as Alonso said, the GP2 engine, you know, it's, 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 it's crap. But um, in terms of livery, I really like it. The black and the orange, I think it really goes. A lot of you are moaning. Um, I love the front wing. I love that, that sort of spread finger effect they've got going on there. Looks beautiful, especially in that orange colour. Stop moaning. Um, when they released the car, it was a bit weird. It was like a James Bond villain cave. All these, these men sitting around like, mm, I really like it. But um, McLaren. I think it's great, and I love their new race overalls as well. They're white, you know, the little, they didn't go for black with them. But yeah, the orange, I love it. Change their name, hashtag change their game, that is their new hashtag, because they're hoping to, to distance themselves from maybe their failings in the past few seasons. So hopefully they can do really well. New livery, new management, new name. Let's hope they get some new results. Oh, and Van Dorn's in there. I love him, he's great. So yeah, McLaren. Right up there, the top ones. Now into the top three liveries for my personal opinion for the 2017 season. Uh, up next is a team that I have not liked for many years, but that's purely because I supported their rival. Um, it is of course Sauber. They've released this beautiful new livery, which I think is a throwback to the old tobacco sponsored days and it really goes with the uh, the wide new tyres and the low rear wings and these lovely whites and blues and the gold running through it. Of course the 25 years on the side celebrating their 25 years in motorsport. Um, it just works for me. It's, it's classic. It looks like a classic livery on a brand new 2017 car. Um, I was a huge Manor fan. It's sad to see them go um, and I was not a big Sauber fan but this new livery I'm, I'm, and with the departure of Manor unfortunately, I'm, I'm rooting for Sauber this year and they're definitely in the top three for, um, for liveries. It, I like it a lot, they've done really well this year. Um, do you agree? Yes? No? Do you think it's too similar to some of the old tobacco branded cars back in the 70s and early 80s etc? No? I like it. Sauber, number three for me. Number two in my list. Um, this team was, would, would not have been this high in my list until I saw them on the track at a filming day and in Barcelona testing as well. It's a beautiful looking car, it's really aggressive. It reminds me of the Batmobile a bit as well at times. Of course I'm talking about Renault. Um, they've gone from that banana yellow, this little minion running around last year to this dark and moody with yellow front and black spiky shark fin at the back this year and it just looks aggressive and I think it works. I'm really pleased with Renault this year. Um, I was a big Renault fan during the Alonso days but that sort of dropped off, crash gate happened etc and I haven't really got back into them. So it's nice to see them on top four looking aggressive again but I didn't rate the car at first when I saw it released. It's only until I saw it on the track and, and bear with me guys, when you see it out there it, it's beautiful. It looks really nice. Um, one thing they have got drastically wrong are those overalls. What were they thinking? Honestly, they look like fishermen, deep sea fishermen with these black and yellow trousers on. It's just, it's not nice. But in terms of aggressive, classic, very French, very Renault, the livery's brilliant. Number two for me, guys. Here we are, guys, at my number one best looking livery for the 2017 Formula One season. It's got to be, all the polls agree, online forums agree, all the papers agree. Toro Rosso! Well done guys, they smashed it. They absolutely smashed it. They've gone for this Red Bull Cola livery with this chrome text and this mean ball. They've got rid of that hand-painted ball which looked messy, it looked clumpy. You couldn't see it moving at 200 miles per hour and gone for a much sleeker, purer, red, blue, silver look. I love it. I think it's brilliant. 
They've gone for the purer shape as well, the same as Mercedes with the, the lovely nose, not the thumb nose, not the pingu nose, not the warus nose. They've gone for the lovely curled nose. They've gone for the higher wishbones. Same, same as the Mercedes, it's very similar to the Mercedes. Could it be a challenger for 2017? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure what the Renault power unit is saying for them as well this year, but I'm hoping to see some race wins from them. I can't remember the last time they won. I think, was it with Vettel? I, I don't know. But in terms of livery, Toro Rosso for me is the best livery of 2017. Um, they've smashed it. Well done. So that's it. That is my best liveries in order for 2017 Formula One season. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.